Hey all, my name is Tom Schwartz and today we'll be covering the firmware upgrade process on the GE MDS Orbit and Master Station. Alright, let's get into it. Uh, first I'll be going through a CLI example, uh, then a web interface example. Um, and then lastly, I'll cover uh, special instructions for upgrading from firmware versions that are less than 7.x to firmware versions that are greater than 7.x, greater than or equal to. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, there are a few different ways you can upgrade the firmware on the GEMDS Orbit and Master Station. Um, and note when I say Master Station, this includes the MPRU, which is the unlicensed, the MPRS, which is the SD Master, and then the MPRL, which is the Orbit Master. Um, and also note that while the firmware version numbers may be the same between um, the Orbit and the Master, the packages themselves are different uh, file names and different files. So just keep that in mind. Um, and then I'll put uh, um, uh, links in the video description below just for your reference to make it easier. One method that I will not be covering in this video is the ability to manage and push your firmware updates from our PulseNet Enterprise NMS system. So that'll be covered in a totally separate video, uh, not in this video. So the first method that we'll cover is in this video is um, using the command line interface uh, firmware upgrades on the CLI can be done via HTTP, uh, TFTP, FTP, or SFTP. In this example, I'll just be using uh, TFTP just because it's, it, it's easy uh, for demonstration purposes. Uh, but the process is the same for, for all of them. Uh, FTP and SFTP will obviously have username and passwords. Um, and then uh, I'll put some uh, good examples of some software you can use down in the description below as well. Uh, just keep in mind that SFTP, if security is a concern, SFTP is, is the most secure out of all of them. Uh, so let's, I'm gonna record my screen here, and so let's get to it. Try to make the text big, looks like it's okay. So the first thing I, I like to do if I'm gonna kind of be walking away from keyboard or you know sitting and talking like, like in this example, is I'll do set idle timeout zero. And that'll just prevent the CLI from, from timing out and you know um, logging you out and disconnecting your SSH session. Uh, so first thing we wanna do is, let's see what firmware version we're running. So the command is show system firmware. So it's right here. And you can see in both images, we're running 7.1.1. So that is the, as of the time of recording this video, that was the previously released uh, GA build. So, uh, so this is a good example. And the next thing we wanna do is let's ping our TFTP server and see that if it's actually responding. So let's do ping 192.168.1.165. So that is responding. So we do have good comms to the TFTP server. And for this example, for TFTP, I'm going to be using this TFTPD uh, application. Back in the day, it used to be called TFTPD32. Now everything's 64-bit based, so it's TFTPD64. And again, I'll put links in the video description below. So the command that we want to use is a request command. So it'll be request system firmware reprogram and i'm going to hit question mark here so we can look to see what our options are so there's file name that we'll come back to in a second then you've got manual file server and pre-configured file server so uh if you just want to fill it out manually each time then you would just do manual file server uh, or you can actually predetermine, you know, put in your, uh, write in your golden config if you're, you know, doing massive, um, you know, deployments of, of multiple units. Uh, just put it right in the config as a pre-configured pre -configured file server. Uh, for this example, I don't have it pre-configured, so I'll just do manual. So I'll do manual, and I'll auto-complete that by just hitting tab. And then do question mark. And I'll kind of use question marks as we go. Um, this is a good way if you, you know, don't know the commands, um, so I'll kind of walk you through it. So the only possible completion here is open curly bracket. So I'll do question again, TFTP, another open curly bracket, 
and then do address. And again, if you look at the top of the screen, it's still up there is 192.168.1.165. And then you can specify your TFTP block size. If the port number is different, uh, you can you can specify that differently. Or if you want to set a different uh, timeout. In this case, we're just going to leave those all at the default. So I'll do close curly bracket another closed curly bracket and then the next thing it's going to ask for is the um, file name. So let's look at our FTP directory here to get our file name. So the one we want to load which is the latest at the time of recording this video is orbit-bkrc-765.mpk. So let me get that out of the way. So it'll be orbit bkrc dash seven six five dot mpk and i'm going to bring my tftp server over here so we can see the uh the log once i hit enter oh i'm sorry file name so our transfer has started and this will take probably about a minute a few moments later okay so that reached 100% uh, on the TFTP server. So no transfers are happening anymore. So let's go back and do show system firmware. And as you can see, it is verifying the host firmware image. So usually the order of operations goes, you know, transfer, process, you know, unpackage it, and then verify the host image. So I'll just hit the up arrow, check it again. You can see it's 98% done. Give it a second here, and there we go. Successfully reprogrammed host firmware. And you, as you can see, the inactive image is um, 765 now. So once we have it successfully transferred and loaded in, the command will be request system power restart. Now there's a few choices here. You can you know specify the, the specific image I like to use the command inactive here just because we're toggling to the inactive image. Uh, so we'll just hit enter. And this will take about, um, so normally a, a normal reboot would take, you know, about, about 80 seconds. Uh, in this case, because it needs to do the, the rest of the firmware update, it'll probably take um, probably no more than two minutes tops. One minute, 37 seconds later. Okay, so now that the orbit has rebooted, Let's restart our session. Log in. And let's just verify the system firmware. So there you go. The active firmware is now 765. OK, so now that we've covered the command line interface, let's switch over to the web UI and do the same exact example. I'm just going to log into this orbit. Then go to System, Firmware, Actions. And then by default, this Reprogram Inactive Image is opened up. You'll just do Select File. And then we'll select the Orbit-BKRC-765MPK to upgrade. And then Begin. And like I mentioned earlier, you'll go through the, the file transfer, then it'll process it, and then it'll validate it. So there's kind of three phases to this. So the first phase is done. It's transferred the file. Now it's processing. So the last phase is just to verify the firmware image. And it is complete. So as you can see, the inactive image is now 765. Now before I reboot, I do want to say that um, the options from the command line interface are available here as well. So you've got HTTP, FTP, TFTP, and SFTP. Uh, so now let's just select power and then the inactive image 765 and then restart. 
Okay, now that it's rebooted to the other image, let's just log in and verify. And a quick, easy way to, to see that is if you just look here up in the top right corner, it says 765. And a little shortcut for future reference, that's actually a clickable link. So if you just click on the whatever version is in your top right corner. Oh, let's go to some other screen first. <laughs> that would help. Uh, so yeah, if you click on the firmware version in the top right corner, that'll take you right to the firmware screen, just as a little shortcut. The last thing I wanted to cover is what to do when you're upgrading from old firmware, anything less than 7.x, to anything greater than or equal to 7.x. Um, here I'll show what happens if you if you attempt it without doing the, the trick. So as you can see, I'll do I'll just use the web interface for this example, but we'll go select the file. And let's say we wanted to upgrade from so right now I'm running 681 on this unit. And let's say I wanted to upgrade to the latest at this time is uh, 765. So let me hit open and begin reprogramming. What will happen is it'll transfer uh, the entire firmware file over. And what you'll see in a few seconds here is you'll get an error message. 12 seconds later. OK, so the firmware uh, transfers uh, completed. However, it says failed to process host firmware image. Um, there's a couple reasons this, that this error may occur, um, but 90% of the time, um, it's because it's missing the latest uh, firmware uh, certificate file. So what you'll have to do is go to uh, gemds.com and download the SHA-256 Orbit firmware certificate. And once you have that, and I'll put a link to the, you know, where it is in the description below. Uh, but once you have it, you'll go to uh, Certificate Management and then Firmware Certificates. And then you'll see that there's one here right now that starts with a three. That's kind of the, the important part there. So let's hit Add. And again, we'll use local file just because that's the easiest. Um, just like earlier, the other server options are there if, if you need that. Uh, we want to replace the identity you know, that's already there, that we want to replace the certificate that's already there. So we want to make sure that we name it exactly the same thing. So it's all caps, G-E-M-D-S-F-W. And then we'll select the file. And I've got it right here in, in this folder. It's called GEMDS SHA-256 firmware cert. The original one was a SHA-1, so it's uh, uh, just an upgrade. So that's complete. It happens really quick. It's a small file. And you'll notice now that the certificate hash starts with a 4. So that's uh, you know kind of your indicator that, that it worked. So let's go back to firmware now. Go to Actions. And I'm going to select... Uh, I'm going to select the... Uh, 765 again, and then begin reprogramming and let it transfer. Okay, so now after it transferred, you know, before we had that error message that popped up, now it's actually processing the file successfully. I'm just going to end here because obviously it's it's going to succeed. We already went through this earlier, um, but that, that's really important. You know, if you're upgrading from, from old firmware to, to the newest firmware, whether it be 7.x, 8.x, et cetera. Um, you know, just make sure you keep that in mind if you see that error message. Um, nothing to be concerned with. Just grab that SHA-256 uh, PEM file and uh, load it into the orbit first. Uh, thank you for taking the time to check out this video. Uh, if you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, I'm going to try to release new videos once a week if possible. Thanks.